Ah, hello. Last Friday, I went to this place, Belton House. It's a National Trust property just outside Grantham. And I went by train from London, King's Cross, on one of these advanced first class tickets for just £41. At Belton House, I met up with my very good friend, Malcolm, whom, because of Covid, I hadn't seen for over two years. In fact, he took my picture. Would you like to have a look at it? I'll put it up now. Anyway, I'm on to more important things, photographing Belton Park and House. And for that purpose, I use the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II with the 12 to 100 Pro lens. Can't show you that at the moment because it is taking this video, but I did take as backup the EM10 Mark II with the 12 to 50 lens, very much an underrated optic, but very handy for when I am travelling. And then, of course, I use my big camera, the EM1, for photography around and inside the house. So, let's get cracking with the programme, shall we? After leaving home, I have the benefit of an attractive walk to the station for the 7.20 departure to London. At St Pancras International, my security team were on duty, so I made my way across the road to King's Cross Station in one piece. It is fascinating to compare the new with the old, and they have done a great job in restoring the latter. I had time to pop into the first-class lounge for coffee and nibbles before catching the 9.33 for Grantham. My train is the one on the left. I'm a glutton for punishment. I could have caught the bus to Belton Village, but I chose to walk by the river, instead entering Belton Park via Lion Gates. You might think that you have arrived. Oh no, it is much further than you think, at least three miles from the station, but I did it in 80 minutes. I don't hang about, managing a few snaps before meeting Malcolm at the house at 12 noon, and on time. Well, I was a couple of minutes late. Didn't matter, though. Belton has been described as the perfect country house estate, and although imposing from the outside, don't expect a grand entrance inside, as you might see elsewhere. It is more of a lived-in house. Work commenced on the house in 1684, and is dressed in Ancaster stone from a quarry four miles away. It is certainly worth looking inside, but as light was good and cloud cover was increasing, we first toured the Dutch and Italian gardens. Once inside and following a tasty lunch, the anticipated cloud cover had softened the light to my advantage. The National Trust do not permit tripods or flash, so time to sharpen up your hand-holding skills by holding your breath. 
The combination of the EM1 and 12-100 Pro lens is amazing. Both units have image stabilizers, and you can get away with murder, metaphorically speaking, of course. Before leaving the interior, I spotted this painting. It shows London from Greenwich Park, from a much earlier time, and you can see St Paul's and the Royal Observatory. How different it looks today, and that is its fascination. But what those hills are in the background is a puzzle. Too high for Hampstead Heath, and indeed the Chilterns. Back outside it was now quite cloudy, but close-ups look better in soft light. But if you still want the big view, as here at the boathouse, try and get rid of the sky. Include it, and it becomes the brightest part of the picture, killing the shot completely. I did get the bus back. The bus stop, very conveniently located outside the main gate in Belton Village. As you can see, I am over a hundred miles from the capital, but as it turned out, I was back in town early, so I had time to pop into St Wolfram's where the choir were rehearsing, and they sound very good. Pity I couldn't stay. A perfect end to the day, not to mention wine on the train, and then I fell asleep. I did walk over 13 miles. Good job the train terminated at King's Cross, as it could have been much more 